So what I'm actually trying to, to say is, is that you can all do all of these formal things right and not have an inch of better privacy protections. Yeah, there, yeah, that's something you have to try about. You can actually, uh, and I, I call this double bookkeeping. <laughs> you as a, as a CEO, you just purchase your GDPR package, install it, but in reality you don't really give a crap about it. So that's what I call the double bookkeeping. You just make a, a, a smoking mirror around this and don't care about the actual problem. So to quote a um, less successful CEO I, I once met who said, well, I till, I till. Well, you don't need to care about that. We have the books and we have locked them up. Excellent, excellent sort of response to that. So, and again, I don't want to uh, sort of expose any companies, but... Facebook had a research app where they paid $20 to a teenager to uh, get the information from the mobile phones. Yep. Is uh, your privacy worth $20? Well, again, we have to start in the area of saying what is Internet of Things worth to us. Um, if we want a future where Internet of Things is uh, part of our daily life, we actually need to share our information. What we then have to do, in my opinion, is to uh, put sort of a limit where the privacy as such is and where our private information is used to develop the Internet of Things. So, in the essence of things, for some humans, $20 is a huge amount. Um, for uh, the privacy as such. And for some, it's not enough. I do have, uh, uh, I, I went on a course a couple of uh, weeks ago uh, from the, the uh, where they had GDPR as a main topic. And the lawyers there, they all discussed around this exactly that many companies purchase their package, as they call it, a set of documents, a set of procedures, but that's it. There's no instructions, there's no company sort of, uh, sort of changed around it. They just want to purchase the minimum requirements and that's it. So it's a matter of a subject opinion and the subject as such is the matter of privacy. So it is a kind of a difficult, difficult question to actually answer. In my opinion, um, Facebook is, 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 is making a, a low bid, a very shameful low bid of actually fooling you um, manipulating you in believing that $20 for your personal information to develop the platform as such is enough. In my opinion, no. I would suggest to my kids and my relatives and, and so on, no. So how much uh, would you sell those information for? Well, Facebook can easily have my pictures from my latest vacation for $20, but my personal information that they are actually are targeting to develop their platform, that will cost them a slightly more than a $20. But to put a figure on it, I don't know. Um, I would start to need to actually evaluate what is that privacy worth to me. Uh, not now, but in, in, in the future. Uh, relating to this question is many of the generation set, if you will, the millennials, <clears throat> they believe in a very fast forward lifestyle. To them, $20 for their personal information right here, right now is no biggie. It, they can easily make a, a fast $20. But let's say the millennials in 20 or 30 years want to be head of state or prime minister or whatever. They, they seek at a higher office or, or, or a key position in a company. Suddenly that information, that, that, that photos or whatever it might be, now the $20 can actually make it or break it in that career. So in the perspective of the long term, $20 is, is way way, way low for personal information. Most larger companies mm. that have consumers are very well aware of social responsibilities. Do you think that privacy will be something that gain the same of importance in the companies in the future? I think so. Because when you talk to people around you, uh, in different layers, in different type of comp companies, it's more and more important for them to know where is your data and what do they know about it and where do you have it. 
it's not just that you uh, give it to some customers and because some of them are selling your data in a third or four layer. But, and that's something that you may be not aware of at the moment, but you really should be aware of it because it's using data in a different kind of manner than when it was collected. But again, Facebook do know that they have, that generation have a very uh, unsecure point of view seen to privacy. Uh, and I'm thinking that they are doing a very wrongful thing in not explaining for what the $20 actually can be seen to risk and vulnerability seen to 20 or 30 years in the future. Yeah, so it's the cost of not having privacy that will be a cost, future cost. I'm actually uh, comparing this to, 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 to ask a 15 year old that smokes. Ask them, do you realize that it is harmful to smoke? That probably they will say yes. Do you know that you can die from it? And they will say no, because you can't die when you're 15. You're bulletproof, you are young, you're in the, the prime of your life. <clears throat> ask a 45 year old. Can you die from smoking? And they will say yes, because they have a, a different perspective to death. What has this to do with privacy? Well, privacy to us, that is 45 year old, is very, very key and very, very essential. Many 45 year olds understand the importance of GDPR and the EPR and the regulations that actually stipulate our right as a subject. Does a 15 year old understand the harm and the vulnerabilities and the risk of letting you go of that personal information for $20? I doubt it. So, so I, I think one of the, the real strengths of GDPR is that makes Europe very competitive for data processing. So I've been talking with, with uh, companies and governments outside of Europe where they say, well, we want to store the data in Europe because then our consumers can trust that the data protection is to the highest standard. That, that's exactly where I was talking before, that uh, the brand from companies uh, is now concerning the privacy. And we have all sorts of uh, discussions around this. Uh, the best one is the, uh, the Analytica. Uh, Cambridge Analytica. Cambridge Analytica and Facebook. And this raises another question that I think uh, is quite interesting, is that the data that Cambridge Analytica actually uh, spilled out, that was already uh, data that existed already in the American governments. Because whenever you enter an electoral place, uh, you actually tell which sort of uh, um, party you're going to vote for. So the information already existed. So Facebook never collected new data. It just recollected data that already was officially published. So it's about understanding the consequences of your actions. It is. That's it. When you do that, hopefully, when you're an adult. You can't like, put that responsibility on a kid. I do think you're right there. I, I, really, <clears throat> it's, to me, it's about awareness and, and education. And I see that the school um, system, as today, have a huge responsibility in this in actually teaching the 15-year-old to put a value of those $20 on the personal information. I see the school system and the digitization development, they actually giving out platform, uh, the pads, iPads or computers, and, and, and fine about that, but it lacks in terms of education how to use it in a proper, secure manner. Uh, which security behaviors and attitudes and, and values you need to have on the internet. And that is not in relation to that your personal information today is, that is, that is hard currency. I mean, if, you, if I own your uh, social uh, security uh, information, your emails, your addresses, I can make way a lot of money than those $20 that Facebook's offering. Said that, I, need, I understand the concept of the, the platform as such need to be developed. And again, if you teach the kids how to behave in a secure manner, where the lines of privacy actually goes and where not, they, I believe that they would believe, think that the $20 as such would be a very, very low. When I was in New York recently, I was skimmed. Uh, and with us, just a few minutes after it happened, they called me and said, you might have been skimmed. Mm. And I was actually just outside the store where it happened. So 
So that's, that's a good thing. And in terms of privacy, so this credit card company could actually watch my every step, what I was doing, what I was t do type of purchases I did. Mm. So it's, um, I was glad that they protected my money. Uh, I felt actually a bit threatened that they actually could see all my purchase patterns, because that tells you a lot what you're doing in your life, depending on if they are actually trying to utilize that to analyze my behavior. But they didn't see what I purchased, it's just that that was in this store with this amount of money in this location. Right. So, okay. Then we have back to privacy and GDPR, what are you allowed to use the information for? Yes, so, and, and that's important, that's the thing we need to focus on. Is it illegal to do something like this? Again, it's a very good and a very hard question. The ethical aspect of it, is the Facebook liable to actually try to explain to them what they get for those $20? Uh, yes, do I think Facebook knows the implications seen to 20 or 30 years? No, I don't. Because no core business today have analytics uh, hired that could actually predict that. But the ethics as such, uh, if we have a GDPR or regulation that actually tries to protect the subject and especially protects those under 17 or in the, uh, I mean it's not because they are kids it's because they need to get a different perspective and view of their personal information and privacy of that. Um, recently I actually found out um, that there is a research I knew it but now I get a, a, an academic approach of it that a three-year-old can can actually log on to an iPad what risks are connected to this and the privacy as such? Uh, well, if a, a three-year-old can, can log on to an iPad, you don't need to be an expert to see the risks and the vulnerability of that. And in connection to the question as such, I believe that the ethical aspect from Facebook and social media platform, that they need to be as thorough, as crystal clear, as cognitive clear in the information of what impl uh, implication it comes with giving away for $20, absolutely. And here comes the big point. What Analytica did is that they made connections between those data. And this is a new thing. My apologies, I'm gonna use this as an example. Let's say that this is me concerning my data and this is you concerning your data. Now, when we look at those as individuals, we just see them that you need to protect your own sort of bubbles. But I think the new thing that a lot of companies are doing at the moment is they extract data from this, they make the connection. You and I both work in IT. You and I have similar ages and so on. And this is the data that is the future, the gold nuggets for so many companies. So they, they can use that to, to create what's called the marketing. Uh, within marketing, there's something called followers. Uh, the whole concept is that you as a consumer, when you go to a website and you do a couple of clicks, and they can detect what kind of person you are. And let's say that you log on to this web page, then they know your identity. But then you have what's called followers, which are people with similar kind of profiles, but they haven't been identified. There's a lot of money now going on on creating segments of followers and collecting that data. So it's no longer the personal data, it's the extract of the data. And at the moment, there is no law against this. Should we look at the social media companies as those that sell tobacco, those that sell arms, those that are gambling companies? It's legal, but some ethical funds don't invest in them. The obvious answer would be yes, but I will say no. Uh, you can't actually liable uh, or make the social media platform liable. What the social media platform actually is doing is making it possible to share information. But as an individual, we have a responsibility on an individual level to actually understand uh, that you are going to be trying to be manipulated by tobacco, by arms, by uh, <clears throat> retail or whatever. Uh, do the generations of today that use this platform? No, they don't. But there is the, there's another side to this. Facebook has closer to 2 billion users. Uh, to not 
recognize their responsibility to actually making their users more as a target audience for campaigns or, or adverts or, or anything. That is an aspect that I don't see. Uh, uh, Facebook, for instance, because we're talking about Facebook, um, actually acknowledging. They are pushing the responsibility towards those companies. And if it's legal, hey, but yeah, um, that is a huge problem. And I think that the social media platform is not responsible in the first line, but they are co-responsible, absolutely. Security, is that more important now when we have the GDPR from your perspective also that you have to put yes. down m much more effort? Yeah, I think actually we need to at least think it through. What do we need? Why do we need it? And how can we keep this secure? Because that's also a part of the entire GDPR and using that as a, a force to be able to they have the correct data, to have it secured, uh, to get a better flow. Uh, I think it's actually a perfect law to gain a better IT environment and a better control of the data that we have in our systems.